Miami on the Rocks, Casey Chops. Make sure you follow us on that Instagram at MIA on the Rocks. Follow us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, Miami on the Rocks. Today's guest, from somebody who came up in radio who's been in the industry since I was like 18, 2007, you always knew who ran with Pitt in the early days. And a name that constantly came up throughout my career has been Big Teach, whether it's through, you know, his early days with Pitt, whether it's, you know, the food truck, House of Mac, to the brand he's built it in today, two locations in Miami. So somebody, if you're in the industry in Miami, you've definitely heard of Big Teach. And it's an honor to have you here, my brother. Thank you for, you know, giving me your time. Six, oh. six feet that. Hey, <laughs> are you from Miami or you were born in New York? Nah, so, nah I'm, I'm originally from um, Brooklyn, but I've been back and forth. Um, I, like, I went to elementary school here. I went to... Mm-hmm. I went to um, junior high school, high school, but my mom did um my, my mom did like private duty nursing when I was young. Mm-hmm. I was born in Brooklyn. I was born mm-hmm. in Brooklyn Hospital, mm-hmm. but my mom did um private duty nursing, and she she uh she made like three times mm-hmm. as much as she made in New York. Mm-hmm. So we was like always like back and forth. Okay, so, so I'm probably at this point I've probably been in Miami more than I've been in New York. Okay, dope. You know so I mean? can you when you first got here, can you go over like you know your early days because. Is Pitt the beginning of your story? Is when? No, nah, actually, um, well, actually, the beginning of the story was um, Dewberry. I, I, I started, um, I went to culinary school. So, so I, I, before I left New York, the last time I left New York, I, I, um, when I was 16 years old, I got into a shootout in New York, and um, I went to prison for five years. At 16? Yeah. I came home when I was like, it was like a month before my 17th birthday, so I mm-hmm. came home when I was like... 22, 23. Mm-hmm. And then when I came home, it was like, you know, I just needed to just change my energy. I needed like a, a change of environment. Mm-hmm. So um, my mom, my sister, and like be, right before I came home, they came that came back down and moved back down permanently. And <clears throat> it was like, you know, so that's that's when I came down here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I came down here, I went to culinary school. Um, Damn, so the cooking stems back from the yeah, very beginning. Yeah, yeah before oh. all of that. So I went to culinary school. And like I had like all these aspirations. I'm, I was like, I'm gonna be next top chef, and yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, I got my first job in a restaurant, and I hated it. My first mm-hmm. job was like in Red Lobster, mm-hmm. and I hated it. <laughs> but that's so, it. that's so, interesting. My bad. Continue. Nah. So my man, my man Dewberry, who was mm-hmm. God bless his dad, he, he got um, murdered in like he got murdered like seven, eight years ago. But he was like a huge promoter out here. He used to do like all the hood parties, mm-hmm. and they used to come in Red Lobster and eat all the time. So mm-hmm. um we connected somehow like through mutual friends stuff like that and you know back then i was like swole because i just mm-hmm. came home so um it was at first i was doing um i was he, he invited me to do like security work with him mm-hmm. and i was doing that like part-time and then i was like you know, i ain't feeling this restaurant thing and he was like well you know i, I got you know I, I got something for you if you you don't want to do this no more you, you come promote for me whatever mm-hmm. so that's who really um you know, showed me how to move around the city and, 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 and promote. What parties were you doing at that time? Like, what era was that? That was like when Coconut Grove was still mm. cracking. So we was doing like, um, like what was it? What was it? Oxygen. Okay. And like, you know what I mean? Like those days. Okay. But doing them used to do like all like the hood parties, like Diamonds mm-hmm. and Pearls and like, mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like, like at one point we was doing some on South Beach. I can't remember. But, you know, doing them used to be like notorious for like all like the, the popping hood parties. Mm-hmm. Like he used to bring, you know, all the big, big, like, you know, you have like the South Beach crowd mm-hmm. and then, you know, promoters are bringing people down for them. And then you have like the off the beach crowd mm-hmm. and dude was like that guy that would bring the artists to mm-hmm. the market for that. So he showed me how to promote. And then, um, Ironically, I was out promoting for him mm-hmm. one night at Amnesia, and um, my man Jeff Sanchez lost his two-way pager. Mm-hmm. At the time, I didn't know who Jeff was. Jeff worked for Luke. He lost his two-way. My man actually found a pager, and at that time, I was doing everything. I was selling burnout phones. Mm-hmm. I was selling two-ways. I was selling Hustling. everything, and my man brought me the pager because he knew I um, I had plugs with that, mm-hmm. and I was just like, yo, homie, just give dude back his joint. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and basically took the pager from him, and uh, Jeff was texting, Jeff was paging a two-way, like, yo, lost my pager, you mm-hmm. know, I reward, blah, blah, blah. And I hit him back, and I was like, yo, homie, I got your pager. Let me know where you at. I'm going to bring it to you. Mm-hmm. Met him at the mall, and he was trying. I was like, no, nah, homie, this is yours. And um, we connected. And then come to find out, he worked for Luke. So 
from there he would see me all, all the time. Now I got that that put me on his radar. Mm-hmm. His 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 wife at the time worked for um Fat Farm. She was like some at she was like GM some at Fat Farm. And Jeff was about to move back to New York. So he was looking for somebody to fill his position at Luke Records. So like I don't wanna say like maybe like a month later, he hit me, met with me and was like, yo, um, you know, I'm 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 seeing your work, man. I love, you know, basically I'm about to move and I'm looking for somebody to uh uh, take my position at Luke Records and I went and talked to Dewberry about it you know what I mean I just told him you know I just felt like I owed him so I didn't want to leave him high and dry mm-hmm. got his blessings and um, and then Luke was the start and then the first thing when I walked into Luke Records um, I shared the office with Jeff and then he's like yo I got this I got this Cuban kid yo like yo he's nice you got you know you got braids he, you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and, and he's 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 explaining pit he's like yo, mm-hmm. I'm gonna introduce you to you like I'm, I'm I'm gonna he coming by later on I'm gonna introduce mm-hmm. you to him and that Je- so Jeff Sanchez introduced me to pit a month into that we was on like a 52 city tour wow. so I jumped on like I jumped like right into it you know yeah. what I mean and then you know I toured with pit like you know what I mean went all across the country and so obviously we built a relationship and that was mm-hmm. just, that was the start so Luke it was Dewberry and then Luke. Luke showed me how to work records and all that, and then through Luke and and Jeff Sanchez and all them, I met mm-hmm. Pitt, and that was that. When did you? When was the moment when maybe you heard Pitt spit, or you were like, "Wow, he's nice." Nah, because I mean, for him, you know, like a Cuban, light skin, you know, like you would have to hear him rap to be able to be, like be sold. So, what kind of sold you with his talent? Nah, I mean, you know, I I I, I was hearing all the, I was hearing all the, uh, I was in studio sessions, I was hearing all the rough. The, so he he had buzz already. Yeah, but not only that, like when we was on tour, like dude was jumping off the bus. I got footage, like dude mm-hmm. was jumping off the bus in the middle of anywhere USA and battling dudes, like you know what I'm saying. Pitt started like battle. Those rapping. videos are classic. They're online. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. But Pitt started like you know Pitt battle Dragon. You know what I'm saying? Like Dang. in the earlier days, he went to Rough Riders uh, video shoot. That's how that's how Luke found him. Wow, Julian. Um, so, you know, like I, I was, I was there, like I witnessed like, you know, like him going on the block and like, dude, you know, cause they looking at him, yeah. like, you know, he looked like white, but yeah, yeah. and he pulling up and you know what they expecting versus like, oh shit. And like, you know, he right. going in the middle. I can, can I curse? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, so that was that. I mean, and then, you know, outside of that, we just built the, I, I just saw his growth. Mm-hmm. And so like I followed him and it used to be me, um, his, his attorney at the time who was, um, Angie Martinez, um, not the radio yeah, personality. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, just a handful of people. And, uh, you know, we used to go to the little shows where it was like three, four, five, seven people. Yeah. And we just saw like the the growth of him as as a as a as an individual, but also as an artist and everything else. You know right. What I'm saying? So, and back then, like working records, you guys would just hop around like you guys were like your like little squad and you would hop around from different clubs and work records and do different shows. and well, stuff. back then it was working records it wasn't like sending out mp3 blasts and all that right. it wasn't it was i had vinyl mm. and i had to literally go to um everything that was popping that night mm-hmm. and make sure that my record was being played at the height of the night at some point so mm-hmm. generally you know we would go to like the live broadcast earlier and this this is stuff i learned from luke like luke mm-hmm. luke luke showed me how to um work records like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and so we would have to go to the live broadcast early in the night because even though the club wouldn't be packed, it's still on the radio, right? right. So if I go to Power 96 live broadcast, it, you know, you got to get that nine, spin. Yeah, you get that spin. That's going on the board, but also it's reaching how many other listeners mm. is listening, even though they're not in the club, they're mm-hmm. still hearing it in their car and everything else. And then, you know, I would end up like at, in, the, in, in the height of the night, I would end up in, you know, the, the busiest club of the night. You know, like back mm-hmm. then it was like 609 in the Grove and you had, um, I mean, it was just so many clubs. Like literally. Mm-hmm. How many I, clubs would you hit in a night? Sometimes like on a, man, like sometimes like on a Saturday, Friday, Saturday, you know, I might hit five, six spots. Damn. You know what I mean? And then, but it'd be crazy because like dudes might have saw me at the mall earlier Putting passing like, out flyers or something, flyers, and I got the same thing on. <laughs> it's like four o'clock in the morning. That's like the real hustle. These promoters yeah, today yeah, yeah. got it easy, bro. They just stay on their Instagram they, all yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it was you know it was definitely. But you know I got a I got a different appreciation um, right. for the game for that. You know what I mean? Because right. I'm I'm versatile and I could I could do it either way. So and I've heard story like were you also like the muscle too? I mean I I wouldn't I mean that was just my personality at the time. Gotcha. I think like you know what I mean like I I just come from. I just come from a place where, you know, like me, me being um, a convicted felon, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, 
I'm used to people saying no to me and me having to fight for mine, right? Mm. So, like, me working with Pitt, people telling me no, people trying to close doors on me, that was something that I was used to and I was used to fighting for it. So I just believed in Pitt. I just saw something in him. I saw a diamond in the rough. I, like, I used to, like, I go to, I, like, I remember one time in particular, I took um, CDs to a barbershop, right? Mm-hmm. And I dropped the CDs off. And then I circled back when I came back. And the CDs was in the garbage can. And, like, for mm-hmm. me, it wasn't even just about, like, yo, you do the, it was just, like, it's disrespectful. Like, yeah. Yeah, so I choked dude out. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and, and. And, you know, I choked him out. I'm just mm-hmm. like, yo, Duke, like, take my shit out. Of the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But the crazy part is, like, you know, a year later, that was the same dude. Like, yo, you think you do my birthday party? You know what I <laughs> mean? And so, you know, it, like, 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 psychologically with people, with people, people have a tendency on just not believing. I've been a part of so many people's careers. You mm-hmm. know, Yo Gotti, Pitt, uh, Pit, mm-hmm. ASAP Rocky, you know, I had a Bay Bay record, the Hurricane Chris, Lil Scrappy, mm-hmm. Lil John. Like, I work with so many different dudes, and I've been, I've been, a part of like so many levels of their success mm-hmm. that um, I'm used to that. Like when people not believing, but I'm, I, but I come from a place where it's like I'm not taking no yeah. for an answer. So I mean, some people might have read it as muscle, but it, you know, it, it's just me. It's just my personality, who I am. I and I'm, I'm not a bully. I'm not none of that stuff. But I'm, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely not a pushover neither. Right. And respect you know, is respect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I lead with respect, though. Mm. I lead with respect. So that's why. Like I'm three hundred percent not gonna tolerate disrespect, you know what I mean? Facts. And it's just like, yo, like, listen, if you, if you, like, expect, you know, and I was more critical on people in the crib because you got somebody, you know, look at what Pitt ended up turning into, right? Mm-hmm. And look at what he, look what he represented for Miami globally. Like he, mm-hmm. Pitt, every, every it, it, he start his show with mm-hmm. Miami three hundred five, like, you know what I'm saying? He mm-hmm. rep, he really repped the yeah. crib every single way he went in the world, and he, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's just like a lot of people that was the gatekeeper to that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's just like, because you don't believe, but like, homie, you in this position. So, right. I, you know, like. How do you feel about when 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 Pitt pivoted and started doing kind of more of the pop route, the top 40 route going for, I'm, you were you were there, you know, from the beginning. So, you know, what is your take on that? Um, I remember exactly actually when it happened. So, you know, so the, the challenge with Pitt, um, when we first started, the the Latins were saying he was too urban. The mm-hmm. Urbans were saying he was too Latin. Mm-hmm. We would go to BT shows and they're like, oh, his pants is too tight and this and that. And then he would go to the Spanish shows and and they wasn't respecting it because they was like, oh, he's too urban. He yeah. he's not speaking enough Spanish. And so, mm-hmm. you know, with, with Pitt, it was like literally like he was a UFO. You know what I mean? And you know what music people when they can't categorize it or they can't put it in a box, they don't understand it. Like you know, like look at think about music. Yeah. Every every song is like in a genre or it's in a category. Right. But Pitt was Pitt is a a, a a Cuban, Latin, American artist that's comfortable speaking English. He's a he's a right. typical Miami right. dude that's comfortable speaking English, comfortable speaking Spanish. Right. But it, you know he's on a record with Lil John. He's on a record with Usher. But as soon as he says Spanish, as soon as he says uh, Dale or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, Como, that alienates whatever. half the people that are hip hop heads. That now it's now it's reggaeton. Mm. Homie, it's not reggaeton. Like homie said mm. two words in Spanish. He yeah. said something in, on a hook in Spanish. But it's not a reggaeton record, right? But if you don't listen to reggaeton, you're not gonna listen to the song. Right. In Miami, and we're used to that in Miami. Like whether you're Haitian, whether you're Cuban, you're right. used to all cultures, Here. island Caribbean culture, you right. know. But once you go to like DC, they're not trying to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's exactly. a gift and a curse being from here, I say. Exactly. Well, I mean, so it was like we had to literally create a lane. We had to create a category. And I remember we was in, I think, Dominican Republic or something. And um, that song, well, actually, the first, the first time where, where, he, where he got a kind of a taste of crossover, because, you know, we, we went from like, damn it, man, to like all of it. And then Kulo. Mm. Kulo was like his like top first Mm-hmm. Like crossover joint where it was like okay, mm-hmm. and then like we was doing shows like yeah ten thousand boom boom and when 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 Kulo started peaking it's like oh yeah fifty thousand hundred thousand like okay first of all way different yeah but then we went to Dominican Republic and, I'm sorry and that's when Lil John got on the wave too right yeah, around yeah. that time too no right? John John was actually Pitt was actually on John's album um, before um, he dropped an album you don't know if you remember Cuban Ride Out on on Kings of Crunk okay tra- track track. Track eighteen or seventeen or eighteen oh, shit. on the Kings and Crunk. It was um, it was, so we had connected with John and them through. I was working John's records already. Um, Disco Rick had introduced me to John and I was already working his records. Um, and then 
um, the Diaz brothers, I think, introduced Pitt to John, and they connected, and John just really liked Pitt. So the, the first record we did with John was was Kulo. Right. But prior to Kulo, John was, I mean, Pitt was on the um, Kings of, the Kings of Crumb, mm-hmm. Cuban Rod I joined. Um, so, um, but it was like literally we had to create a lane mm-hmm. and that didn't exist. And I remember we went to Dominican Republic and that joint, world goes on. Mm-hmm, the Bob Sinclair. Yeah, yeah, the Bob Sinclair joint. Yo, so we in Dominican Republic, nobody speaking a lick of English, mm-hmm. and that shit came on, and everybody went crazy. Mm. And Pitt was like, oh, shit, like, oh, shit. An that epiphany was, right that there. Was, that was, that was, I'm talking to him about to ask him. That yeah. was a moment where he was like, oh, shit, like, it's music. Like, And he was on, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't he on like a three, maybe, I, I believe like a maybe two album kind of like slump, right? Where he was like in a figure it out stage kind of, it well, felt like. So after we dropped... I mean, and this is, you know, I don't know, he might, he might, he might um, uh, accord it differently, but mm-hmm. after we dropped the first album, Miami, we dropped Miami with, um, with TBT. Um, that was a classic, by the way. I was in right. high school at the time, yeah. and that was huge in South Florida. Yeah. Like, so his, his, um, his, you know, I don't talk about personal stuff, but his, his, right. his, his father passed away. Got um, you. And so there was, there was like a period that was a little dark. Okay. And we were trying to figure out a lot of things, but then we started going through things with the label John, you know, and we had a really great relationship with John. John started going through some stuff with with TBT, which was mm. the label we were signed to at the time, and obviously, and then that kind of spilled over into our situation, and it, it was just like it's like a weird time, man. Just kind of just trying to just yeah, figure yeah, things yeah. out, and we saw like how. Um, Steve got leaving and was treating John, and 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 then then you start looking at how it relates to our situation. Right. And so it was, we had some things to figure out. So yeah, there was like a little, there was a little, a little. Like a little purgatory, a little limbo in the mid. Yeah, we just had to figure it out, man. But, um, uh, you know, what's up, brother? We just had to figure it out. And then, um, but then we figured it out, you know? So, so he, the, the Bob, at, at, in DR, you hear that Bob Sinclair song and that kind of gave Piff like the epiphany of, let me try to hop on like some house music because he's still rapping. Like, don't get it twisted. He's still spitting bars like right. on those house records. Right. So. Was that something that, you know, you being there, like the city had to kind of get used to? Or was that something where it was just like... I, I just think it was a natural progression, man. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, um, I, I just think he saw the power of just music, right? You know, I mm-hmm. like, they say like mu- music, you know, music has so many different influences, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and then they say like the music is like the universal language. Like I could walk into a Spanish club mm-hmm. and like listen to some merengue. I don't even necessarily even know what they saying, but the like... You'll catch you, a vibe still. You just, yeah, you feel it. Like, mm-hmm. you just feel the music. And, and I think that was, like, that moment for him where he was like, music is just a universal language. Like, people in this room that if you try to have a conversation with them, mm-hmm. they couldn't speak mm-hmm. English, but right. they can sing this word, word. I mean, they can sing this song word for word. Hear dope Alec. melodies. And, and, yeah. and they dancing and they rocking to it just like somebody in a club here would be rocking to mm. it. You know what I mean? And this is this is pre-social media. This is pre-all of yeah. that. So it wasn't even like you were seeing like how they rocking mm. in Miami. It's like the energy was just the energy because of the music was the mm-hmm. music. You know what I mean? So um, I definitely know that was a pivotal moment. But, you know, and then, it, you know, it, I, again, it was just like he found... You know, Pitt's a hustler. You know what I'm saying. Right. So Pitt, you know, you, you know, like, like right now with with the food business, right? Right. I always use um, music as my power love because um, that's what I know. Mm-hmm. But so, like, when I did my food truck, that was like me putting out a mixtape and moving grassroots and mm. and moving around, testing and trying things to, out, see what works, out and figuring yeah. out what works and stuff like oh. that. And then me getting my first restaurant, that was like. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm I dropped an album now. Uh-huh. And now it's like, and 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 you know, and 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 it's really been like parallels to mm-hmm. to, to music. Like my growth through this, mm. and like my 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 album. I mean, my my logo you, is a picture of my dad, mm. right? And I I treat it at the same way. I would like try to think about like an album cover that you want some kind of meaning. You want something that kind of has some significance, but has a story behind it. Mm. Anything else. My logo is a picture of my dad. That's so, dope. So you applied the things you learned in the music day, game, yeah. right? And so, so, okay. So at the time, during the pit time, um, you, you got the cooking skill in the bag. Do people know that you have like your nice, like, well, it's crazy because, um, so I would, I would just cook some, like when pit signed to Sony, mm-hmm. like, Peter Edge and 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 like all Brian Leach and like all of these like execs from Sony came down. Mm-hmm. 
I cooked for mm-hmm. like the signing party thing, mm-hmm. and then like you know, a, you know, ASAP Rocky and 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 ASAP Ferg and all them, they were pescatarian, so. You know, they would come down here. Really? That's a wild Snapple fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Ferg, I think Ferg, 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 I don't think, I don't know Ferg's still a pescatarian. I know Rocky was for a long time, but, mm-hmm. you know, they would come down and um, they, they heard I could bubble and then, mm-hmm. and then it would start, like, I would cook one time in the studio and then they mm-hmm. would start taking their studio budgets and, like, let's each go to Whole Foods. Let's, you know, let's each cook. And then, so it just turned into a thing. Mm-hmm. And then um, I used to do, I used to cook therapeutically all the time. Like, even though I wasn't cooking mm-hmm. professionally, when I would come off the road, I would do a bunch of barbecues and stuff like that at my house mm-hmm. because that was the only time, like, we was traveling so much, that was the only time where we would, like, see each other and see mm-hmm. each other's family and your friends and stuff like that. So, it, it wouldn't even have to be, like, no major nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just like, hey, barbecue in my house, come on. Mm-hmm. And then my, my... So, is it the social part of cooking that's kind of, like, therapy to you or is it, like, the peaceful kind of, like... Because I could, I could feel that when you're cooking by yourself and you're just... Cooking is art, man. Cooking mm-hmm. is... Cooking is, um, me and you could have the same exact ingredients on this table right now mm-hmm. and the same same recipe, mm-hmm. but yours is going to come out different from mine, mm-hmm. right? And it's the same thing. You could have that same, I could have that same camera, but you might see the room in vivid color. I might see the room in black and white, right? So it's, mm-hmm. everything is about perception and how you see things. And, 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 you know, for me, when I take food, food is like, um, Food is like an art. Like food is like going into the studio and creating a song, mm-hmm. and then but it's almost instant gratification because then you see people taste it, and then you see the facial reactions, you mm. see the little dance, and you mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's what food. That's what food. You know. So 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 the therapeuticness of just being able to go in somewhere and just create and then create things that people yeah. enjoy. That's that's what I that's what I enjoyed about it. But then. Um, my, my barbecues would be my test kitchen, right? Like I would, mm-hmm. I would do barbecues, and people didn't even know at the time when I was. So you're like trying out different recipes and food to see what people. Yeah, but people ain't, and then I wouldn't say people. I wouldn't even tell people like, yo, I'm considering doing this. I'm considering doing that. Mm-hmm. I would just like, okay, boom. And, and and the thing is, how some mac came about because the mac and cheese was always the talk of the whole situation. What I was gonna tell you is yeah. the first time I heard of it is is I was at a, a listening party at Cool and Dre's studio, right? And I don't know if you had your I don't you didn't that have was your jock. Food. That was Young Jock. It man. was Jock, yeah. yeah. And you didn't have your food truck at the time. No, no, no. And they're like, bro, go try the lobster mac. And at the time, I'm like, lobster mac, like. I didn't really, you know, I didn't, I, I've never had lobster mac before. Right. So I tried it and I didn't know, like teach, like pit teach cook. Right, and I right, see, right, I'm right. like, oh, what's good? And from there, that is that kind of when you kind of like. Now, that, uh, that was kind of like, see, that was, those were the times where I was trying to figure it out. And I'm glad you brought that up. Cause like, that's, that's like Jock is my man. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, so like, that's, a, that's a perfect, like Jock did his album release thing in, um, in Atlanta, like with DJ drama and, and Cannon and all these radio dudes. And he flew me to Atlanta, like, yo, cook, like, yo, you know, he wanted me to be part of the yeah. situation. And I'm the label dude. Like, I'm the label dude, too, though. Like, yeah. he's signed to Polo Grounds, you know mm. what I'm saying? So, I, you know, um, I cooked for him. I cooked, no, actually, the, the Cool and Dre one is the the first one that I cooked for him. And after I cooked for him there, he was like, nah, you got to come to Atlanta. And then I ended up doing mm. the Atlanta joint. But that was like my artist, like, yo, dog, like, yo, it, it added a part of the vibe. Like, I used to cook for dudes and they whole families and they would come down there with their whole squad. And I would just, you know what I mean? I would just cook. But um, where did it come? Like, what? Because would you say the Lobster Mac is like your signature? Nah. Nah? I, I mean, because now it's like 19 of them. So it's like. Um, the the lobster mac is a signature, but now we got a seafood mac that we sell that is forty dollars, and it's like one of the top five selling items that we got. You know what I mean? Well, I was more more referring more toward like the beginning, like oh, during the, the like like yeah, your claim yeah. to fame. Yeah, on, yeah, what yeah, you yeah. Mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and so my brother for life, right? So Bun followed me on Instagram, and I used to I used to do the lobster mac on barbecues in my house, and mm-hmm. Bun. Bun was one day. Bun was like, "Yo, man, I'm shit. I'm coming to Miami uh, uh, on Friday, man. I need I need a pan of that lobster mac for me and Quinny, man. Boom, boom, boom. And Quinny's his wife. Yeah. And um, he came down and made him the lobster mac. Then it started turning into ritual. Like every time he was coming down, yo, I'm going mm-hmm. out on the boat. I need some food, yo. I'm blah blah blah. 
everything you had going on. And at this point, it, are you making money from this cooking or is this still like a side hustle? Now nah, it was a side, like, like it was a side hustle. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even about money for me. Like I might like, like Bun is my, my brother. So I, yeah. it wasn't even about money. I'd just be like, yo, I'm, well, this is what it's going to cost me to make it. I, I ain't gotcha. even need no money. And I was still making music money. I was still making mm. six figures doing this. I still, you know what I mean? I still was getting money with Pet. Mm-hmm. So it really was just therapeutic for me at that point. Um, but then... Bun was the first person that like actually sat me down and was like, bro, listen, I know you're doing this music thing. I know you're making some money over here. He's like, yo, but yo, you got to take this cooking shit more seriously, bro. You got something mm. special. And I, you know, I'm like, come on, bro. I'm like, I'm never, you know, and I hated when I worked in Red Lobster. So I couldn't, yeah. I, in, in my mind, I couldn't even fathom or imagine like going back and working in a commercial kitchen. I wasn't, yeah. I was just like, he was like, yeah, yeah, bro, I hear you. I hear. And I, I would, every everything he would say, I would have a rebuttal for it. Mm-hmm. And everything I would have a rebuttal for, he would have yeah. a rebuttal <laughs> for it. And, he would, and then one day he sat me down. He, he actually, um, you know, the Gumball 3000 thing that Eve's husband does, the little, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a cannibal run, but they do it like all over the world. Okay. They'll start in one place, start in one country, end in another country, but they drive in Lambos and oh, shit. Range Rovers and Ferraris mm-hmm. and Porsches. So that year it started in, this was like 2014, I believe. And this, that year they started in um, Miami. Mm-hmm. And he didn't tell me what he was doing, but he was just like, yo, I'm staying at the W, yo, bring me, bring me, um, he told me he ordered a bunch of food. Mm-hmm. Took it up there, boom, went up there, we kicked it for a little minute. And he was like, yo, I'm about to call these dudes down for the gumbo. Just, just go by the bar in the corner, huh? Just, I want you to see something. Mm-hmm. Called him down, took the pant, took the, took the, um, the covers off all of the shit mm-hmm. and dudes went crazy on the food. Like, yo, mm. order another pan of the, you know, they, they thinking he ordered from a restaurant yeah. or something like that. They're like, yo, yo, t- t- order another pan of the wings, order another pan of the, the mac and cheese, the mac and cheese, the mac and cheese, mac and cheese. And he turned around. He's like, yeah. you see what I'm <laughs> saying? You. And then after that, he sat me down for like 45 minutes and he was just like, look, bro, I'm just telling you, you got something special. He's like, yo, and so basically that night I gave him my word. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna go for it. So like, if you go to my Instagram, the first picture is a picture of me and, and me and wow. Bun. Wow, that was in 2004. That was the day when I gave Bun my word. I'm, you I'm said 2000 what? It was 2014. Okay, and it's in in. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong too, but like in regards to you not seeing the vision of you being a cook, there's no one like in the culture that we could like, like now if a kid wants to come up and be a cook, you could be like, yeah, chef teach. Right, and You know right, what I mean? Right, At right. that time for you coming up, there was, was there somebody within the culture that you related to that you were like, you know, that spoke hip hop that kind of was, you know, that you could uh, see? Nah, nah, not, right? not, not really. Um, it, it, one person that I saw that I, I appreciated his story, which we ended up becoming good friends, um, Jerobi from um, Tribe Called Quest. Okay. I had saw some stuff on, on, on social media, like, you know, that he was, like, transitioning. He was doing some stuff in food in Atlanta or somewhere, something like that. And I just thought that was kind of dope that, like, mm-hmm. yo, you know, you following your passion and stuff like that. But I still didn't see me doing it professionally like that. And, um, you know, Bun definitely threw the battery in my back. But it also showed me, like, yo, it's, it's important, like, Sometimes, because, you know, I'm piss manager, right? So people always think, like, you know, a person in leadership, in a, in a leadership position, like, you got everything all figured out all the time. And, like, you know, you, you know, like, even right now, like, I check on all my people. I try to make sure everybody good. But, like, mm-hmm. re- very rarely, like, I get a call. Like, yo, bro, you good? Like, yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. cool? Like, you know, and and I needed encouragement in that. Because I, I was, at the time, I was kind of, like, I love Pitt. That's my brother. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I talk to Pitt few times a month you know what i'm saying like like mm-hmm. you know thank god like we 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 maintain a friendship mm-hmm. over the years even though you know sometimes things don't necessarily you know work out with business and stuff like that mm-hmm. but um at that time that it, damn could my bad teach can you speak on that like you actually being friends with Pitt, coming up with him, and then you actually having business with him as well. It, it, it's very hard for friends to do business together. So can well, you- as people and machines and things like that grow, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I, I took Pitt as far as I could take him mm-hmm. at that place in my life, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, Pitt was the first artist I ever managed in my life. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, like, it, we, we took it to a certain place, and then that shit just went crazy. And then it was just like, we started going into a lot of like uncharted territory that mm-hmm. like I ain't necessarily know like that. And then plus mm-hmm. I, ain't, I don't speak Spanish. So then we started right. going into, you know, his markets, a lot of places we, I don't know, I don't right. even speak Spanish. We going into Colombia, we going to Mexico. We, and they only want to, 
Mm. It, it's, it just started getting a little bit weird. Right. And um, the path just kind of started like. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, you know, and I and I get it. And I'm not even I'm not even mad at none of it. Right. right. But that's what's dope is that both of y'all were aware and, and, and understood the situation and don't harbor any ill. It seems like y'all yeah, are no, cool, we, even though y'all went both different but ways. But it never was. It never was even ugly. Like we just even when I was just like, homie, I'm out. Like, I don't you know, we, we parted ways amicably. And he, mm -hmm. he 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 was like, all right, cool. Here goes some paper, man. You know what I mean? It wasn't mm -hmm. even like no. We we you no know bad I mean? blood. Yeah, it was never. It was never. You know, we we agreed to disagree on certain things. Mm -hmm. Like like I, I brought him. I'm uh, this one is one. I'm like I brought him Uber for equity. Mm. Back Uber 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 Sheesh. Uber. What you know Uber for? Yeah. And it was like things like this. I brought him Uber and I sat him down and I, I presented it to the team. I brought the lady down. Through, they, I put him on the phone with the COO of Uber at the right. time. And, he didn't see the vision, right? right? Like, you know, in hindsight, like, you know, right. you know if you had point zero 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 one percent of that, and they was talking, they was they was willing to talk equity, and um, he didn't get it. Right. I, I brought him. I brought him um, that movie with um, um, the bucket list okay. um, with Morgan Freeman and um, Jack okay. Nicholson. Okay. I brought him that. He had a role in. He he passed on it. So it it just got to a point where like I was just like homie, like I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know yeah. what, what, what we doing, bro? And, yeah. and so you know, we, so we 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 part of ways amicably, but we've mm -hmm. always remained friends um, over the years. And um, you know, and 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 the best thing I could get out of my relationships with my artists is just their support. Like he supports me, mm -hmm. pulls up. You know, what I'm saying when I need something. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying so. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, 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 yeah. But. but um, I lost my train of thought where I was going before. Before yeah, I said that. back to um, we're at the Bun B story where he told you you started taking it serious. Now I guess we could get to the food truck part. That's the first organized rollout yeah. of like you said the mixtape. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So so I bought the I bought a food truck in uh in 2014. Um, and this was before food trucks were like popping, right? It like was a, it was a it was a few joints. It was a few joints out there, but I don't. I'm 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 gonna probably say like it's probably been nobody out here that did it the way we did it, mm -hmm. and I I think the reason why part of it the reason why it worked is because we approached it very non traditionally. I didn't approach it like the way I really approached it. Like, I, I I treated my thing like a project. Like I got footage from when I you know when I first of all when I want to bought my truck. I dropped the bag. Like I, she mm -hmm. was like, "Well, how are you gonna finance it? You know, I'm I'm coming off of music. I'm yeah. in there with the I'm in there with the duffel. Like, mm. all right, cool. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So so um, but but I but I I bought a lemon. Mm -hmm. So I paid seventy five thousand, whatever I paid for that, and this lady sold me like a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was a brand new kitchen inside of it, but the the, the chassis of the joint was rusted out, bad engine, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I went through hell with that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it was just been a, it's been a learning experience, man. But you know. Mm -hmm. I also think, um, like through the music business, um, the music business really taught me um, critical thinking, mm. right? Because every day in the music business is a different business, and when you manage an artist, you manage in their business, but you also manage in um, their personal lives. You manage in mm. everything, and every day is literally a different day. Um, and so every day is a different day with this food thing. Oh, the dishwasher called out. Oh, it's two cooks Just called putting out. out fires. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, so. When I start, even the COVID thing, like this COVID thing has been like, you know, crazy. And it's like, I'm sharing, I'm, I'm, I'm staring like this huge ship. I got over 50 employees right now. You know mm. what I'm saying? And all of these people and their families and all that um, depend on, on me. Mm. What's happening? I got to move with um, security and all that now. It, it, it's like, it's just crazy. Like, I, it, it's yeah. like, it just, you know, but, but it's, it's just a responsibility mm -hmm. it's just a responsibility that comes with it and the critical thinking um really helps me maneuver through these waters where it's mm. just like i can't stress over things i can't control i can just control the things that i can control Thanks. and let me focus on solutions versus focusing on the problems and mm -hmm. so that's basically how we we move but i got all of that from music and, and definitely mm. the hustle and and you know working with somebody like a pit where it's just like you you basically just got to just it's, it's, figure it out. Because, yeah, think about it. Like, what's my blueprint? What what blueprint am I following for a pit bull? Like, I literally got a, 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 a UFO, like basically. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, with the music business, it's not one size fit all, right? Like what mm -hmm. works with Pitt didn't work for Yo Gotti. What worked for Yo Gotti didn't work for mm. ASAP Rocky. What worked for ASAP Rocky might not even work for ASAP Ferg. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they're all different artists. 
And so each individual, you got to figure it out. And so I think that's why the way we approach the music business and, you know, I never really just like try to just sell food. I sold my story. Right, mm-hmm. like it was always. If you if you go through my whole thing, it's always been about my story. You don't see like a bunch of buy one get one free, but right, well, I'm right. Like posting a bunch of stuff about food. people. People come because of the brand House of Mac, yeah. but people really come because of you and 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 like you are the face of the restaurant. It's not like you're in the back, like running, you know, like. But 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 this is the thing. Like when you think about artists, right? Mm-hmm. People buy into artists and their story, and like, you know. This is what I did in my sleep with artists. Like, mm-hmm. I, okay, cool. Pitt's popping in Miami, but he's not popping in Texas and he's not popping in, you know, Atlanta. He's not popping in whatever. And then we got to find a way to organically um, penetrate, pause mm-hmm. the market mm-hmm. um, and make people mm-hmm. embrace him. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And the way you do that is by, you know, obviously with the music, but then mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's trying to find connections with them organically. And that's like through stories. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's like you put little branches out there. It's like psychology. Think. You got to figure out how people think yeah. and what they're going to. Yeah. And it's, it, and, and again, it's not one size fit all because mm-hmm. like, yeah, we might've did this for uh, Casey Chops in Miami, but okay. It might not because Miami and Atlanta is two different markets. Like, Facts. you know what I mean? Like, you know, Cali is a different market. And like, we started going to Cali, like the gang culture out there. Like yeah. that shit's different. Like, yeah. That's just different. Like the way you move around and like, you know, like we walking through the Beverly Center mm-hmm. and it's like uh, four blacks and a Cuban. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, Cubans and uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, Mexicans and blacks don't get along in in, in, in Cali. So like right. we walking through the mall, people looking at us and like, they, we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. It's just different. And so, you know, I mean. That's why I love Miami, man. Can my, you speak on that? Like our city, bro? Because Miami, my, my, what Pete used to say, uh, uh, they they well, New York is the the big apple and it's the pineapple. It's like my, Miami is like a melting pot of everything. You know what right. I mean? Like Miami, you know, it's just so many different cultures. It's literally a melting pot of you know, and specifically like a Caribbean melting pot. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I could have moved to L.A. You know, and I just not a West Coast guy because I need that culture, that Caribbean culture. Right. You know, like it's a different type of vibe from the food to the music to yeah. the way we stay out late and we're festive and it's yeah. just. You know what I mean? I couldn't do it, but I want to go back. Okay, so now we're at the food truck, and how long did you have the food truck for before you opened up the restaurant? And what made you say, okay, now it's time that we could? Um, we was on a food truck. I launched the so I bought the food truck in 2014. We launched the food truck actually for the Mayweather, the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight, mm. May second, 2000. <laughs> 15 and the reason why we did that even with the roll out of that mm-hmm. i was like everybody's gonna be looking for somewhere to look at the fight mm-hmm. all the bars everything is booked out went to cool and dre cool and dre got that big thing in the mm-hmm. front like all right cool we're gonna rent a hundred foot um screen mm-hmm. and we're gonna project the fight here when it got with hennessy open bar open mm-hmm. bar hennessy all night you got somewhere to watch the fight we got the food and that's how we launched the truck. So when you look at the pictures of the truck, you mm-hmm. see that long ass line. But you know what I'm saying? Like that was like aligning myself with 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 um with a with a with a with a strong brand, a Hennessy. Mm-hmm. That was uh, creating a, a um, you know, because we captured all the visuals, we captured mm-hmm. everything from that. And you have all your connects and the people that you know from the music industry came, posted, showed you love, and exactly. you, you connected the exactly. music. Exactly. So again, I treated that as the same way I would have wanted to treat uh, an album launch, or mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying you want to you wanted to have some type of impact, and 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 that's what we did. So we launched um, May second, two thousand and fifteen, and like from the time we launched, it was just pretty much. That's pretty much what it was from the time we started, man. Like, we would start mm-hmm. pulling up and, you know, we started utilizing the social media. Yo, we're going to be on Biscayne at 17. Before we even pull up, 20 cars already in the parking lot. That's what's dope about a food truck, though, right? It's like yeah. a moving restaurant. Yeah. Is and so, it? yeah. So, like, it allowed us to kind of build this following that, like, followed us. So, when we would do pop-ups, I, like, and, then I, and then I did a pop-up in Brooklyn and it was, like, standing room only. Oh, shit. And so, but that's, the, that's when I first started realizing, like, yo, social media is, like, crazy, mm-hmm. right? And so... um, we moved around for like two years. Um, for like a year, we was moving to like all like the breweries and stuff like that. Like the second year, I got into the Winway Yard, mm-hmm. and the Winway Yard allowed me to just kind of park in set one place, shop. set up shop, plug up electric, all that, and treat it like it was a brick and mortar. But even with that, we were selling out every day. We were mm-hmm. selling out every day. We were selling out every day. We had a line blocking every. It was ten other trucks in there. Our line, we blocking everybody else's truck going out the door. And we just couldn't keep up with it. The kitchen was too small. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, that it, it got to a point where it was like, yeah, the line and all that is great, but it's going to come to a point where we leave money on the table because it's going to be people, people that don't want to stand on that line. And Right. The, the demand is too high to, to be able to supply it the yeah. right way. Yeah. So so um, the, the transition from the truck to the restaurant, actually, um, the Wynwood Yard, uh, Lennar ended up buying that property for, I think, $11 million or something like that, and they're building condos mm-hmm. on that property. So when I found out that they were closing, I had a bunch of, like, realtors in my inbox, like, yo, I got a property, I got, you know, mm-hmm. and somebody had hit me about this, the House of Mac location, was like, yo, I think I got a perfect spot for you. And then it was on 2nd Avenue, yeah. but technically it was on the Overtown side, not in Wynwood, so the price was yeah okay. You like on the edge, so you got the benefits. Yeah, of being like, so like I wasn't paying like the Wynwood Wynwood mm. price, but it was small, it was cozy, it was clean, mm-hmm. and it was a pizza spot before. So which you know, so I was like, oh man, I got on my real time. Like yo, grab that like yeah. immediately. Got this, and then that was you know it was like we we outgrew this before we even started. Like the first day we opened it, we had a line outside the door, and then we got the second side, and now we got mm-hmm. the, the the third. But I got I got next door now too. Damn. So, so how do you how do you feel about the transition in Winwood? How do you because you know it's going corporate. They're building a bunch of like what is that? What are they building over there? Is that a Hilton or a big hotel? I think they're building right there on on twenty ninth. Like, that's 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 where the one where y'all used to be. Right, right, right. Yeah, they're, the, they're, they're building condos right there. Okay. Um, they're building like luxury condos, but I mean that's 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 what happens. I mean, you know, that's gentrification. Right. right. Like we make it cool. You bring in the artists and all that. They kind of. So is it impossible to teach to stop that from happening? It's inevitable, right? Well, I mean, I'm I'm trying to show by I'm trying to show by example, right? And you know, like I'm 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 really on my Nipsey Hustle shit. I'm really trying to buy back the block, mm-hmm. right? I started with one, now I got three. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it starts by like creating businesses and creating jobs and and, and trying to empower people and put people mm-hmm. in position. Um, you know, my partner Reggie, Reggie started off with me as a cashier, and mm-hmm. you know, we went to a cook, and then I made him my my GM, and now mm. you know, I allowed him to invest in um, North Miami Beach. Now he's my partner, right? And you know, we got to get off the the, the crab in the bucket mentality, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I mean, with all the social shit and all the things that's going on in the world and all that right now, like, you know, we could we could you know we could pump our fists and we could you know we could protest and get mad and mm-hmm. all, but you know, these people only respect a couple of things, and one is blood and one is others money. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And unless we start putting ourselves in a position um, to empower ourselves mm-hmm. financially. Mm-hmm. And owning shit, um, keep it within the culture. Keep like, within the culture and, mm-hmm. and 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 circulate money in the community and stuff like that. I mean, the same thing gonna keep happening. Mm-hmm. So with me, I'm just trying to just show by example, bro. Like I'm I'm out here and I'm just trying to just do my little part, mm-hmm. and maybe I can inspire. You know, my 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 son's first job was with me. Like you know what I mean? Dope. My son don't need to go to a bank to borrow no money if he want to mm-hmm. start a business because I could fund his business. Right. You know what I mean? And this is what this is what we got. This is how we got to start thinking. We got to start thinking about generational wealth. We got to start thinking about just just, Plant, just planting seeds, generational seeds, yeah. seeds that yeah. you might not see the benefits, but your son's son might see exactly. the benefits. And, exactly. Exactly. Damn. So, it, 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 how's your vision right now? Um, and, and are you focused just on the restaurants, or do you see yourself branching off into other things, other are you, uh, well, hospitality? Or, honestly, right now with this COVID nineteen yeah, shit, well, like you know, what I'm saying like I'm my mentality right now is just like. Let's, I'm just trying stay to stay afloat, really. Like, yeah, like I'm, I'm, you know, I got tunnel vision right now, just trying to just stay focused on what we got going, what I got on the plate right now. Mm-hmm. But you know, my mentality, you know, bigger picture wise, is the what I just told you. Like, my mentality is ownership. My mentality is um, generational wealth. My mentality mm-hmm. is 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 the bigger picture, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's whatever that is. Like, it's you know, I I wasn't. Ten, six years ago, I wasn't even thinking about doing food. Like, and then, mm. uh, like, you know, I, professionally, and yeah. now, like, I own restaurants, right? Like, so yeah. me, I'm just trying to just get educated. I'm trying to surround myself with like minded people mm-hmm. that I can learn from. There's a lot I don't know, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and, and I wish I would have been thinking the way that I think 20 years ago, but, mm-hmm. you know, I had to go through my experiences. But now I do know, and now I'm trying to instill this kind of stuff in my son and in my daughter and in my family um, so he could get it early. Mm. And start thinking like that early, or whatever case may be. And 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 right now, I'm just like you said, planting seeds and just trying to just you know make it make sense. What what advice would you have for someone who's you know young and maybe they like cooking, they're creative in the kitchen, and they're like, damn, what's the next step? Is it a food truck? Like, how do well? What does Big Teach tell them? Like, 
just someone who's into cooking like that and wants to take it to the next level. I, what I say is, man, like, you know, if if you if you got something like follow your follow your heart and follow your dreams. Right. Because mm-hmm. um, it's 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 too many dream killers out there. Right. Because it's mm-hmm. like, well, you know, somebody be like, well, man, I tried that and blah, blah, blah. It ain't work. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. it ain't work for you. It don't mean it won't work for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I think that. And, and, and I know it's like a cliche saying, like a lot of times people say it, but there's a saying, something along the lines of like, when you find something that you love to do, mm-hmm. um, you never work another day in your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's the truth, right? So, um, me DJing, I feel it, bro. So, you know, if if you if you have a, and, and, and one thing I would tell kids is, or just people in general, like, you know, like restaurant business is hard, man. Like it's not, it's not an easy business. It's not. You know, it's not a walk in the park, man. You got to count the penny, man. You got to you, you got to you got to watch and play, stealing. You got it's it's just right. a lot of things um, that you got to pay attention to. But you know, for me, I love cooking, right? Mm-hmm. So the 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 passion is what drives me through. The you know, bullshit. It, yeah, the bullshit. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's also extreme highs. It's mm-hmm. extreme highs. It's times where like yeah, we had like a great week, Art Basel or whatever, and it was mm-hmm. like oh shit, like mm-hmm. it was great. But then there's times where like now, like you know, there's extreme lows. It's like times where I got to make personal sacrifices to make sure that like the the overall picture, my team and everybody is good and keep the morale and everything like that going. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, entrepreneur entrepreneurship is a very lonely place like you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. you know a lot of times there's no blueprint is you, you gotta figure shit out you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and you gotta you gotta figure shit out and that's what jump it is. out the airplane and build the parachute and on the way down literally literally <laughs> and that's real talk yeah but you know everybody everybody's not built for it but mm-hmm. if you are passionate and and and, and it's something you want to do um even though sometimes people not gonna see your vid like yo bro i, I love the music business Mm. I was working. On, I had a, I had a number one record on the charts. ASAP mm. Rocky, Long Live ASAP. I had all. I, man, I had number one records on the chart, and was, I'm, I'm on a conference call talking about Rocky's project, and they like somebody got a bunch of noise. I'm on a grill at the same time, flipping, <laughs> flipping chicken on a grill, and they like somebody put your phone on mute. There's a bunch of noise <laughs> in the background. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and people was like when I when I first left to go. Start, and it, it came to a point where I wasn't doing my artist justice, right? Like, mm-hmm. because I was kind of one foot in, mm-hmm. and then I was one foot in. And I was trying to figure my stuff, and then mm-hmm. it was like, yo, you know, like from an integrity standpoint, it's like, bro, I'm not giving you 100 percent of my, my my thing. So I had to make a decision. Like, am I going to just do 100 percent? The safe space for me at that time was music, because it was like I had. I had um, you know, I'm I had a contract. I'm mm-hmm. six figures over here. I'm People still, know you. And yeah, yeah, like I do this in my sleep. Um, that was a safe place. Um, the uncomfortable place mm-hmm. outside of my comfort zone was the food because it's like, okay, well, what if this? What if this don't work? What if blah blah blah? Um, but. What I've learned is comfort kills, man. Like comfort, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people out here doing things that they hate right now because they're in a safe space or they feel like they're in a safe space. And know what's crazy is this COVID shit is forcing you to kind of like get out of your comfort zone. If you're not willing to, exactly. this shit is pushing you out of your comfort zone. Exactly. Forcing you, you out know? of your comfort zone, right? And so for me, it was like I had to make that call. Like, yo, am I going to come outside of my comfort zone mm-hmm. and just like, all right, cool, here it is, here we are, or am I going to whatever? And and like from an integrity standpoint, you know, and I, I was always the guy with the artists. Like, I was always on the ground with them. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I was in Memphis with Yo Gotti. I was mm-hmm. in Atlanta with Jock. I'm in New York and I'm in wherever with Pitt and ASAP and, and, yeah. ASAP and all of them. So you know, I got personal relationships with them. We we breaking bread together. We in hotels checking in and out every night. Another mm-hmm. we in shows. We mm-hmm. getting the fights together. Everything happening. Mm-hmm. I'm there. Right? Yeah. So, um, I, I couldn't I couldn't cheat them. I couldn't. I, and I know from a management standpoint, that's dope that you're self aware to know that though. Nah, bro. a lot of people are not like that. No, you know what it is, man. Like when 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 I when I was managing Pitt, and it was like so many dudes. You go to their city, and they only work. When you did, but I also mm-hmm. did street team, so I, I I I knew like other dudes who used to do that shit. Where like you know like when an artist in town, they make it seem like they've been out here working, but yeah. like you ain't been doing shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then so like, but then you get on these conference calls and you telling these people, oh, you know your record's not working and blah blah blah. So I knew that's how these dudes get down. So 
they wait for the big weekends in Miami, yeah. then they pop out. Yeah, and, like where you been at though, bro? Yeah. Like you ain't even you ain't even take you know you ain't even take Casey Chops the record. You ain't yeah. even take um you, you ain't even take the big dudes. What the are you doing yet. during slow season? Exactly. Like, yeah, like they don't even got the record. You ain't even working it. Like I was there. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's the first time I ever heard. Yeah. So it was just like so because I did the street team thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew how that worked. So like when I started, when I started doing it like on a national level and start working with Penn, moving around, mm-hmm. I knew how to look at these dudes work and see if they was really working. Cause mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't just take your word for it. Like I mm-hmm. know B Lord in South Carolina. I know so and so, and I'm calling them directly. Like mm-hmm. yo, did so and so bring you this record? Mm-hmm. He like, nah, I ain't send it to me now. I got you, woo woman. I'm like, Damn. so, so from an integrity standpoint. Um, I just ain't want to be one of them dudes where like right. I could take a check, I could make it look like something. I could, right. you know, I could, I, I know how to doctor it up and make it look good on paper. But like this, your life I'm playing with, and I'm not gonna play with your life like that because mm-hmm. you deserve a shot, you deserve a chance. I'm not right. gonna play these industry games with you. Right. So when I felt like it was coming to a point like that, from an integrity standpoint, I had to make a decision, and I chose to bet mm-hmm. on me. Word. Right. And then even on the side too, I see that I see these crazy visuals, and I'm like, yo, who's doing these visuals? And whether it's headliner Mike Gardner or I forgot who else, but you'll see it's conceptual reality, yeah, right? Man, yeah, and, man. And I'm like, damn, Teach, <laughs> Teach is running that too. How does the video portion? Is that something you're into on the side as well? Nah, so I got into video when I was managing Pit. Mm-hmm. Um, I kept trying to, when, when cooking video, like you're just doing it nah, all. No, but like, it's just listen. Why not? Right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like when when I was managing Pit. Um, when when things started, you remember like MySpace and like mm-hmm. when things started kind of going towards like content, like it, it was like when Instagram first came out, it was just pictures and it was like, oh, you gonna do fifteen second uh, mm-hmm. videos now? And then mm-hmm. so things started going in this direction where it was like more content driven. You know, when I first you saw started, the trends early, yeah, because I, I I was actually another thing um, in my in, in my later years with Pit, I was I I started Planet Pit, mm-hmm. which was like like the whole digital right, thing right. that Pit. And I was going to Silicon Valley. I was in, um, I was going to CES and I was Damn. going to, I was in, I, I didn't know nobody in Silicon Valley. Yeah. I went to Silicon Valley, jumped off a plane and just started moving around and networking. And, yeah. and, and so I would be ahead of CES's Consumer Electronics Show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would just go to these shows like the same way like people go to like Mix Your Power Summit and all these other, I would mm-hmm. go to these shows and then you go and you like, it's showing all the technology mm-hmm. that's coming. That's how I got plugged with the, with the, Uber. Um, with the Uber and all mm-hmm. that stuff, right? So, um, but obviously, I'm the, I'm the elf, literally the elephant in the room because mm-hmm. nobody looks like I'm, right. I'm. I'm the big black guy with the right. Rolex and the big chain. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody else got on <laughs> the a computer suit and dudes the and shit. Yeah. So obviously, people are like, "Who's this guy?" Yeah. And, you know, like whatever. And um, you know, so I was ahead of the game with a lot mm-hmm. of this stuff. And so um, the visuals, I saw all of the stuff that was coming through the pipelines, like um, from from a visual standpoint. So. I was trying to tell Pitt, like, yo, bro, you need to... And first, he was, like, really uncomfortable about having cameras around all the time and stuff like that. But I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, you got to start documenting. And he didn't want to do it. But guess who they call when when MTV wants to do when I was 17 or when VH1 wants to do a document? Because mm. I had everything, right? Mm. And then he's like, oh, yo, how I teach? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, but, it's time now. It's time. Yeah. But but um, but I... I um. I was trying to... I kept trying to hire dudes to shoot stuff for me. Mm-hmm. And they were either really good but had too much shit on their plate mm-hmm. or they were cheap but mm-hmm. they suck like their cameras mm-hmm. the, the you know the, the visuals everything just sucked yeah so I um I was like yo you know what we was in LA one time and I was like yo you know what how what I was like yo what what, what camera are you shooting with mm-hmm. they said oh this is a 5D blah 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 alright cool they had like this I can't remember the name of the store in LA it was like a big store like a B&H kind of store mm-hmm. I went to the store I bought the camera I bought every lens mm. And then there was a program called Lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. Okay. Lynda will teach you how to shoot, edit, color correct. It, sh- it teach you Pro Tools. It'll teach you Photoshop. It, mm-hmm. It's all um, all um, online tutorials. Dang. Went back to my hotel room, started looking at the tutorials. Right. Okay, cool. That's how you shoot it. This, what, this lens does this. This lens does that. This camera does this. This is what the ISO does. This is blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. This is, this is you, you put blues, color corrected. If you want to make it um, cold, you put mm-hmm. the blues. If you want to make it more warm. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. That's all these dudes doing. And I started playing around with them. I'm like, oh shit, this shit's not it's like it's like producing a record. Yeah. It's like it's it's just like um, Or cooking, really. Like anything creative, really. It's like Pro Tools with visuals, bro. Right. So I'm That's like, crazy. oh shit. It's like Pro Tools yeah. with visuals. You yeah. literally cutting up tracks, 
and putting them together and woo woo. Bro, I literally just started doing video during, cause I always did radio shit, commercials with yeah. audio. And like you said, I'm like, it's gonna be easy transition for me to go to video. Like, it's, it's the same it's, shit. It's Premiere with Pro Tools, it kind of looks exactly. the same. Exactly. So I started doing it and I'm like, oh shit, this shit's not even that hard. And then I started playing around with it. And then um, Mike Gardner from Headliner, at the time, he ain't even had nobody. He, so mind you, like you got the biggest party in the world, Sunday, and he ain't had nobody capturing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, you got listen. And he, like I sat him down a few times. I'm like, yo, you got to start capturing the stuff, bro. You got to start. And he he didn't understand. I said, yo, I'm gonna come in there and I'm just gonna shoot. Mm -hmm. and, I, and my man, my man, um, um, Gabriel Hart, who who used to shoot a lot of stuff for, for Jeezy, was down here, and then. I, my little man Mo and then me we went in the club and I don't remember what was going on in the club and he we shot mm -hmm. and then I came back and I was like before I put this out I, I rented a hell of, we, we I rented this This is like before like all the B-roll and you could just buy all the stuff I went and rented a helicopter got in a helicopter <laughs> flew across Miami got a bunch of B-roll and then I came back and I edited some shit and I put that shit out in black and white and he was like yo what the fuck so I had to literally show him yeah like, and then I, I put some shit, cause we was shooting in like, shooting the feet, people walking by, mm -hmm. and like the, the dude in the bathroom with the, with the candy. You had and the, the cinem cinematography, like. Yeah, but like the details, mm. like we captured it. And mm -hmm. like, and he was like, Drake hit him about some shit one time. Like, yo, who was shooting? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was like, yo. So, so um, like Meek Mills followed me because we shot when, um, when he had the, the um, I'm a boss. Uh huh. And the first time he, he performed it in, in Live, and we taped that, the Live shit, and shit went like viral, and then Meek saw the shit and followed me. Mm -hmm. I still don't even know him personally, but he followed me because of the shit yeah. we did at Live when he was trying to break his record. So Mike saw like the the power of- um, And are you, are, so damn, Teach, because I feel like a big part of the Live on Sunday brand is when you do see the footage back from Instagram, and you might be in charge of this, you tell me if you, this is your creative idea, that the cinematography and those vid with the slow motion yeah, with the yeah, yeah. with the you know you have like the OJ's playing in the background yeah, in the video it's, it's, with like it's all bro like you know everything like bro we captured it's it's so much stuff that we've captured in that place but it 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 but the way you package it is some different shit yeah, bro because it's, everything it, it yeah, is it's, it's it's a feel right like mm -hmm. it's 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 a feel like you, you know you got dudes that just shoot some shit you, yeah yeah but it's put it's, a meek mill song in the background just do some regular like a regular club recap yeah like, no nah, yeah. but it's it's the feel it's the music it's the it's the colors because you know we're color correcting mm -hmm. you know like you know it, the, the if you know, like when you want to make something feel spooky, you add the blues to it. When you want to make it feel warm, you add the browns to right, it. The right. black and white gives it like that classic thing. Then the it's lighting, the, right? Like the you lighting, can do the lighting with different. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, everything is intentional. You know what I'm saying? But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we had to had to had to like Mike in the documentary he's putting out. We we talk about that. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like I had to con you know I had to initially convince him the importance of document mm -hmm. everything you're doing, but doing it right. And so you're <laughs> doing it right now though. Like you know what I mean? So it's like it's safe to say, like throughout your life, you're the guy who's early on shit, trying to convince people, like, yo, this is gonna be the wave. I and think, I think I have been, I think I've been blessed um, to, I don't know, you want to call it a third hour, or, you know, I'm just good at seeing things in the rough sometimes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'm, I'm seeing some, the potential in something. Yeah, and like sometimes, you know, a lot of times it's timing. You know what I mean? Because there's mm -hmm. things that I've seen early, and it's like it's something there, but it's not ready. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, because mm -hmm. timing is just as important as talent and everything else. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but there's, there's, you know, there's, there's been things that I've, like, honestly, like, you know, like when, when we talk about it, like, I'm like, I talked to Pitt about Uber early. Like, this is like, you, you know, who, who's going in? Uber ain't talking to nobody about no equity. Yeah. Uber not having no equity. I think Jay was one of the first ones too who invested in Uber, I think. But but the thing is, they went to Pitt. They, they came to us when they, when Uber was trying to launch into Florida, mm -hmm. right? So they were dealing with all these lobbyists and dealing with all this kind of stuff out here. And I'm telling Pitt, I'm like, homie, listen, they money so long, it's going to happen with or without you. Yeah. Trust me, it's going to happen because they money, they was already in the bees, but mm. they were still only in New York, California, San Francisco, San Francisco. They weren't like in all of these different cities yeah. like that. I think they were like maybe seven places or something like that. And I'm like, homie, like, this is going to happen. Believe mm -hmm. me. All you got to do is just get in the middle Throw yeah. some interference, make yeah. some phone calls, let them know you working. You know what I'm saying? I told them you're not interested in no little upfront money. You, you want to have an equity conversation. And they were like, we're willing to have a conversation. So I'm just like, you know, 
and, and I remember explaining to people what Uber is and what Uber is about to be. And people was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, how do you not see yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about, bro? Like, I'm telling you what this is about to be. So, yeah, like, I've, I've, I have been blessed to be able to, like, see some things kind of early mm-hmm. and just kind of water the... Water the uh, Were you early on Amazon, too? Huh? Were you early on Amazon, too? Nah, I ain't. Yeah, so I got Chef Teach in here, Big Teach. Can you unplug um, all your social media? Insta- Instagram, World Famous House of Mac. Uh, Twitter is House of Mac Miami. And I think Facebook is uh, mm-hmm. World Famous House of Mac as well. Okay, dope. And you, if so, if you, if you want to see like the, all the creative types of mac and cheese that you could possibly eat, they have it all here. You got chicken parm mac, you got lobster mac. Like, can you speak on some, some other? Um, um, yeah. So, uh, if I start saying, I'm going to sound like uh, Bubba Gump from, um, <laughs> what you call it, uh, for, Forrest Gump. But nah, um, yeah, we, 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 uh, we basically took a, a traditional di- gift and, 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 and altered it and um, had a lot of fun with it. So, we got everything from uh you know the five cheese truffle mac, which is like the basic joint. We got we got jerk chicken mac. We got uh, mm. chicken parmesan mac. We got buffalo chicken. We got Philly cheese steak. Uh, <laughs> pizza mac. Um, what doesn't work with mac and cheese? What have you tried that's just like okay, now this isn't gonna work together? I don't know because I, I I think like it, like everything that I have I haven't done anything that I've tried that I've had an idea that didn't work. Gotcha. Um, but um. It's like sometimes like in the middle of the night, I'm like, yo. Is that yeah, how, like, like yeah. how a rapper thinks of like a punchline? Like, yeah, oh shit. Like, yeah. Yo, because like when you see the thing is like, when, like, like mac and cheese is a sacred dish. Like, like really mm-hmm. like, you know, when you, when you go to um, most outings, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all kind of stuff. Um, the the mac and cheese. I don't know about in I don't know about in your household, but mm-hmm. my household, mm-hmm. the mac and cheese is now the mac and cheese is universal. Teach, but I'm saying That's it's <laughs> it's you know you got like certain key things on the table. You got the, you got your your turkey. Or you might right. have a ham, or you might have whatever. Right. The the mac and cheese is if not more important mm. on the table than mm-hmm. all other stuff. Gotcha. Right. And but like you know. So the, the person who's bringing the mac and cheese to the to the thing, they like the star of the show, right? But if you if you fuck it up though, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's pressure. So so so, but generally the mac and cheese is like, you know, mom's made it or grandma's made mm-hmm. it or auntie, somebody that's like thorough and official passed down. But to take something like that, that's like so like sacred, and like you know what. I'm gonna put some pizza sauce on this, and I'm gonna throw some ricotta cheese. Yeah, like who does this guy think he is? Like, right, <laughs> right, right. And then even to call yourself the House of Mac, you know what I mean? People, grandmoms and moms, they pulling up, and I know, I know they pulling up because they 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 want to uh, they want to test. But you know what I'm saying? You like, got you got the, the 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 grandma approval. Yeah, from, like I mean, the OGs. You know what? With the OG, what they do is they just come in and they 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 give you the they give you the just the strong hug. Like yeah. I, I'm 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 with you know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they 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 give you the nod. It ain't. They don't never say like, yo, you got it. Yeah. But, you know, they, they let you know oh, that, shit. you know, you got something there, man. But, um, yeah, man, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. And it's always good seeing you and chopping it up. Nah, bro, brother. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. Like I said, you're somebody who, you know, is, is their name rings bells here in Miami. Nah, thank um, you, held in a very high regard from, from like three generations, from Pitch, y'all's generation to my generation to the young. Like everyone knows Shit. who teaches in this city, man. And oh, man. So there it is. I appreciate you, bro. So I'm, so I'm really like an OG now. I'm like, like old, old nah, G. Nah, yeah. nah, 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 <laughs> nah.